Who's alive in the house today? Somebody asked me, Pastor Ed, did you have a Red Bull this morning? Because I know you don't, you're not a morning person. I, I'm not a morning person, but let me let you know that my baby girl, she's four years old, she woke up at 5 a.m. just so that I was ready and awake for the 9 a.m. service today. If you are meeting me for the first time, uh, my name is Ed. I do outreach and Spanish language here at the church. Uh, uh, we have a Grace in Espanol, uh, 11 a.m. service, and just let me tell you, just real quickly, one of the highlights of my life is actually being able to do outreach and the fact of being able to develop community partnerships, being able to, to meet new friends. And uh, how many of you know that uh, this year, because of the pandemic, uh, I mean, some schools, some superintendents, some administrations had to pivot really hard to make sure that our kids were able to get an excellent education, and it was not easy. Let's give it up for the teachers in the house. And can we give it up to Dr. Patrick Spray, who's watching this morning, Dr. Kent DeKonick, who is going into retirement. Can we give it up for them today? Hey, thanks for watching today. Thanks for being a friend of Grace. And as Pastor said, also, Grace in Espanol, some amazing things are happening in Grace in Espanol. Uh, if you were a part of last week's baptism service, 33 folks, we got a chance to baptize at the 11 a.m. service. One of those folks... Uh, was watching her daughter and son, son-in-law. They, they, they attend Grace in Espanol. Amazing story there, just on its own. They came to, they came to Grace in Espanol. They, I met them at Pleasant Crossing when they were registering their daughter. They ended up coming about six months later to one of our outreach events, the Christmas store. We met again. They started attending with us. He was an alcoholic. Now he is free, has not touched alcohol at all, <laughs> say totally transformed. He serves on our usher team, and her mother rededicated her life to the Lord, watching Grace in Espanol during the pandemic, and said, the Lord is telling me I need to get baptized. She flew all the way from Austin, Texas to be baptized last week. Come on, give it up for Jesus. I wish something good would happen around here at Grace Assembly of God. Amen? And it is a pleasure to be able to take this time today and share a little bit about uh, what God has put in our heart today to make communion the emphasis of today's service. And I just want to let you know that Evel and I have been on this journey of trying to get our health back on track. And I know some of you are looking at me like, Pastor Ed, you are like the, you are like the poster child of just health. I, I don't know it. I, I, I get it. But my doctor still tells me I need to lose about 15 pounds. I told him if I did that, I'd look like a balloon and a string. You know what I'm saying? My head just be... But, you know, I'm not the most disciplined eater. I'm just not. I, I, love, I love hamburgers. I love all that kind of stuff that, you know, just stuff that's not good for you. And Evelyn Light, she, she's, she's trying to help me to, to get on a better track. But I, I, I just want you to know, it's been a journey to health for us, and we're, we're striving, and, and I'm getting to a point here today that's going to connect to communion, all right? But there's normal and there, there's not normal eating. When you look at this picture, there's something normal about this, right? A bunny eating roughage. There isn't anything normal about a guy eating roughage. You know what I'm saying? There's, not, there's nothing normal about that. In fact, I believe that God called me to eat that that eats the roughage. You know what I'm talking about? I know some of you girls are like, hey, he's, he's talking about eating a bunny. I'm from Texas. If it's got meat and bones, we eat it. If it tastes like chicken, we'll eat it anyway. Doesn't matter. But that, that, that it, there's normal and then there's not normal. So a couple of weeks ago, Evelyn and I posted, we needed some help. There's a lot of people out there doing meal kits and just meal prep, and, and so we wanted to go to the experts. And so a couple of weeks ago, we posted out there, hey, I need some help. And so a lot of people, hundreds of different comments, folks commenting about that. And guess what? We joined in. We got HelloFresh. Now, I'm not advertising HelloFresh, but if there's an account exec that's watching HelloFresh from HelloFresh... Yeah, all right? So if you want to send me free meals, I'll accept that. Just saying. But 
we, we, we got on this cake. We just got this yesterday. I haven't eaten from the box yet because yesterday was kind of like my last meal. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to try and like, what's in the fridge that we haven't cooked yet? I was like, I don't care. It's like chocolate, spaghetti, you know, everything that was in there, enchiladas, you know. And so we, we just kind of like ate as, it was, it was ungodly. Let me just say that. It was ungodly. So now, starting today, we will actually get into this new lifestyle. And we needed some help to be able to get us on the right track for help because we, needed, we, just, we just need help. And, and today, I, I want to be able to share and make the connection that for this, you know, meal kits, we need help to get on the right journey. Communion is that for us. Today, I want to share with you the ultimate meal kit, which is communion. This is truly the ultimate meal kit. Now, I'm going to open my box. Yeah, I'm excited. Because it comes with some stuff. Now, you're going to get the best side of me right here. All right. Comes with some stuff, and they send us some some meals, and they pre-selected it for us, and I'm not going to, well, I'm, I may go there, okay? Uh, I don't know, they racial profiled me in Evelyn, but they sent us Mexicali black bean soup. <laughs> Something odd about that. But we'll enjoy it. We'll eat anything. So today, we're talking about the ultimate meal kit, communion. And... For those of you who are watching, we're going to actually have communion a little bit later. So those that are at home, go ahead and get yourself some, some bread, some crackers, some juice. Get yourself all set up and unpack your meal kit today. And I only got one point here today, folks. One point. Because that, that's just the way I work. I can only handle one point. That's just me personally. All right? But my one point today is communion is the meal that heals and restores. Communion is the meal that heals and restores. Now I'm going to set this up, all right? We're going to go all the way back to the Old Testament when this meal kit was presented to us in the book of Exodus chapter 12. And there are some elements that are pretty important that God had set up already in the meal kit for those that were living in this time. These were people, Israelites, that were under slavery for 430 years. They had lived in slavery to Egypt. And God had said, okay, I'm going to free you of that. I'm going to send somebody who will deliver you from that. He raised up Moses. Moses comes. If you've ever watched the story, the Ten Commandments, you know, it's, it's just amazing. God says ten plagues will come upon. Nine plagues has already happened. But by the time we get to Exodus 12, in Exodus 12, we see here that just like the meal kit that I received that gave me a list, a recipe of things to follow, God gave the Israelites in this meal that they were supposed to have at home. Now, I want you to get this in your spirit because communion, before it was in the house of worship, communion was done in homes. You see that in the Old Testament. You see that in the New Testament, when we'll get there with Jesus and his disciples, he sends them out to go to a home. This meal kit was set up for homes. This meal kit was set up to be personal. This meal kit was set up to be an intimate moment. We also see it in the book of Acts. We see there that a lot of times people were getting together in homes, breaking bed, having fun, praying with each other, and just amazing things were happening. This meal kit was set up to arrive at your home. You can do it here in this house of worship, but you, all could, you also can do this in your own home at any time. Isn't that amazing? And we see here some of, the, some of the things that God had listed in the things to do, the recipe to make this a successful meal for them. Now, this was happening at a time that was called the Passover, and I'll get to that. But part of the elements in this meal kit was that they had to sacrifice a spotless lamb, they had to take the blood of the lamb and they had to paint it around the door frame of their home. They had to eat. They had to roast. This is like a good old Texas. Let's put it on the fire pit. Let's roast it. 
they, they, they had to eat all of the lamb, not discard anything at all. They had to have a side dish of bitter herbs. That's important to know, too. And they also had unleavened bread in this meal. Now, all of this was happening at a time in which the 10th plague was hitting that land. And in the 10th plague, we see in scriptures there that it was the angel of death. And he was passing over throughout all of the community. And it said there in the scriptures that whenever the angel of death would pass by and he would see the blood that was painted around the doorframe of that house, destruct destruction will not come to that home. They would be saved. That's where we get the idea and the word pass over. The angel of death would pass over their house and no destruction would come to them. Somebody say amen. amen. Now this is the meal that heals and restores. Now again, 430 years, they lived in bondage. They lived in slavery. There wasn't a time in this generation's life at that time they didn't know what freedom tasted like. They didn't know what it was like to be free, to be able to wake up one day and make their own choice. They didn't know what that was like. Freedom was foreign to them. And so God was setting them up in Exodus chapter 12, giving them the opportunity to escape slavery. God in this meal is setting them up and saying, I am going to prepare for you a new destiny Something new is possible. Something new is around the corner if you simply followed the recipe in the meal kit that I gave you. If you did that, I want you to know a new day is coming. See, it says this in Isaiah 43, 19, for I am about to do something new. Say new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. God was up to something good. And that is the God that you and I serve. That is the God that you and I believe in. A God who is good. A God that wants to do something new. Now in this meal, we went over the recipe. We went over the things that they, it consisted of a lot of lamb and it consisted of a side dish of bitter herbs. Now, how many know that sometimes in life we can get caught up on the bitter times of our lives. Sometimes we will go through some negative experiences. Sometimes we'll go through some, some bad situations. Sometimes we'll, we'll have some hurt come up in our lives. Sometimes we'll be, uh, 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 some situations will happen and that we'll feel ashamed about. Sometimes we'll, we'll just have some things that can leave a residue of bitterness in our mouths and in our minds and in our hearts. And sometimes we can become a slave to that. Sometimes if we focus only on the bitterness, the negative things of life, it, 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 it kind of blinds us and shields us from being able, being able to see a different life, being able, being able to see a, a, a different future. And we can't see our future because we're so fixated on our past. These herbs were dipped in salty water to represent the tears of our hurt. See, these people were slaves. All they knew was slavery. All they knew was pain. All they knew was bitter. All they knew was that. How many of you know that if you are going through a really terrible situation, sometimes all you can do in that time is simply cry. All you can do at that time is simply just wallow in your tears. See, God says in Psalm 56 that he is the one who actually records every single tear that you and I have ever cried. He actually writes it in a book. He does that for a reason because he tells you and I that, hey, even though you're going through a bitter season in life, it is a side dish. It's not meant to be eaten as the main dish. You and I need to understand that those moments in our life are temporary. You and I need to understand that the bitterness of life sometimes will just hit us upside the head, but it is a side dish. It's not meant to be the main course. Are you getting it in your spirit today? Because in Revelation chapter 21, verse 4 and 5, God says this, he will wipe away every tear. Say every. He will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone, say forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, look, 
I am making everything new. Bitter herbs are a side dish. Negative experiences in our life, they're a side dish. The main course in the book of Exodus is the lamb. The main focus is the lamb. The meal was the lamb. The sweetness of the meat of the lamb was available to remove the bitterness from our lives. You see, the story of Exodus is a picture of a much greater story of freedom and what God wants to do in our lives. We see it written in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. He says, How much more then will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God. It's in the Old Testament, they had to take a lamb without spot, without blemish, sacrifice it. It was the main dish. We see here in the book of Hebrews that it's written that Jesus is the unblemished. Jesus is the spotless lamb of God. To why? To cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death. The bitterness of our lives, sometimes if we stay stuck in that moment, will lead only to death. But because of the blood of Jesus, that way we may serve the living God. We see here that God has set up in this meal kit for you and I, this was meant to prepare, to accept, to fill ourselves as much with the lamb as humanly possible. When we approach the communion table, when you and I approach this, you and I should approach this saying, you know what, Jesus, I see you in this, and I want all that you have to offer me. When I come to the communion table and I actually have it uh, at any time in my life, and sometimes I have this when I'm going through some bitter moments. There was a time in my life when Evelyn and I, we lost our son Isaac prematurely, and let me tell you, it was a dark moment in our lives. And then one night, we could have gotten stuck on the fact of what we had lost. And there was a time where I was sitting in my car. I didn't want Evelyn to see me cry. Oh, I didn't want her to see me cry. And I said, Lord, I don't have grape juice. I don't have bread. But I did have a Subway sandwich, and I did have a Coke in my hand. And I said, Lord Jesus, I took a little bit of that bread, I took a little bit of that Coke, and I just ate it. And I said, Lord, I accept all that you have for me because I want the lamb to be the main course. And I don't want the loss of our son to be that bitter herb, that side dish that I eat from today. You see, when we approach the communion table, we're saying we accept all that Jesus is he must be our Savior, but He has to be our Lord. We can't just eat bits and pieces of Jesus. We can't just eat bits and pieces of the truth, accept what we want to accept. We need to accept all that Jesus is when we come to the communion table. See, the meal heals me of my bitter past and restores my hope for a better future. That's what communion is all about. And so God was setting this up thousands of years earlier before Jesus presented himself here and walked with the disciples for three and a half years. And again, this was a meal that was prepared and it was done on a yearly basis. This was something that people knew. And it was tied to a specific event thousands of years earlier. But Jesus, the last night before he was taken, before he starts that one last week of the last week of his life, before he goes to the cross, he has one last meal with his disciples. And how many of you know that God doesn't do anything by coincidence? Everything is done with a purpose. And so the last meal that he has, he has it in the time when they're focusing on the Passover. And we see in the book of Matthew, in chapter 26, it says, And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them. He had told them, Go find this guy Get his house. He'll offer the house to you. Get all the elements ready, and we'll have a meal together. And so they did just as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. It says, Now as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. 
this is my body. He goes on to say, and he took the cup, and he, be, and he had given thanks. He had given it to them, saying, drink, it, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant. See, God here is establishing a new thing, a new covenant. It's going to be a new day for these disciples. He says, this, blood, this, this cup which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of their sins. He says this, I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. You see, the meal, this meal prepared for them was a meal again that the Jewish community had eaten for thousands of years. This was known to them as the Passover. They did this. They, they knew of this. But Jesus is presenting something completely new, completely different to them because he takes it, and the only thing that is available to them at that meal, at that time, in this moment, is unleavened bread and a cup. I want you to get this in your spirit today. There was no, there was no lamb on the plate. There were no bitter herbs on the plate. Why? Because Jesus says, I'm doing something new. There are no bitter herbs in the plate because Jesus knows that the moment that he goes to, this, to the cross, he's going to say, it is finished. There are no bitter herbs on the plate because God has removed all bitterness already. His work is enough. His work is sufficient. When I come to the communion table and I look at that, I don't look at the things anymore of what I was a slave to when I was a slave to alcoholism, when I was a slave to, to other things in my life, to pot, to other things. I don't look at the bitterness of my past. I don't even look at the bitterness of today anymore because Jesus has already worked it out. I'm no longer a slave. He calls me a son. I'm no longer under the foot of the enemy. God says that now the enemy is underneath my foot. I'm no longer to the tail. God says that you are the head. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus. Amen? And when we look at communion, we're able to say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for finishing the work. Thank you for perfecting me. There are no bitter herbs, but there's no lamb on the plate. And I want you to get this in your spirit. Even though that there was no lamb on the plate, listen to me, there was no lamb on the table, the lamb was at the table. He was at the table with his disciples. What does that mean? Jesus was fully present. When you and I come to the communion table, when we have a communion moment, I want you to know that Jesus is fully present. He is fully there. He is with you as you are taking it. And just like in the Old Testament when he wanted them to be able to eat as much of the lamb as possible, Jesus still today says, I want you to get all of me as possible when you have this experience. I want you to understand that when you have this meal, you are accessing my anointing. You are accessing my promises that I said I will go before you. The one that says I will bless you in the dry seasons of life. The one that says that I am your healer. The one that says I am your provider. The one that says that I will give you victory. Accept all of me. I am at the table. And what Jesus is saying to his disciples in this moment is that I am giving you, I am giving you a life and a freedom you cannot create or have on your own. Why? You need me. Because communion is about healing and restoration. Jesus says in Luke 4, 18, before he starts his ministry, he goes to the temple, he opens up the text, and it says of him, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery for the sight of the blind, to set the oppressed free. Listen to me, friend. Jesus' work is here in communion. 
you and I get a chance to partake and receive the freedom that he is providing us. Freedom from things of our past. Freedom from the bitterness of our yesterday and yesteryear or maybe even today. You and I get a chance to fully activate all of who God is when we approach communion. Because his work has not changed. He's here to free you. He's here to free you of your thoughts. He's here to free you of your past. He's here to free you when you come to the table. See, part of the recipe for the folks <laughs> was simply to follow the instructions. At this meal, Jesus says he is the bread of life. We see here that there's still bread at the table. And in Isaiah chapter 53, he says, he was pierced, the word says that he, referring to Jesus, was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. See, so the traditional bread was unleavened bread. It was very thin, similar to this. This is called matzo. And in this bread, there are holes. Very prophetic, very profound, because it says in Isaiah 53, he was pierced. He was broken. And when Jesus says, take, take this bread, he blessed it and he broke it. See, Jesus is saying, I had to be broken so you could be healed. And today, when I come to the table, I accept Jesus' brokenness. And he says, healing is available for me. See, my diabetes, God healed me of, was because of that promise. That he says, I am your healer. And some of us, are broken in a lot of different ways. And I want you to know that today you can receive healing when you approach this table. The cup represents the blood of Jesus. And it's the same as painting it around the doors, the door frames of Exodus chapter 12. Jesus, he says, when you take of this, when you partake of it, you are symbolically kind of painting around your heart, around your life, my blood that was shed for you. And guess what? When we accept the finished work of Jesus from communion, when we accept that, the angel of death will pass over us and destruction will not come to you and I. The Word of God says that you and I can have eternal life. It says in John 3.16, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life, eternal life. Death will pass over you, my friend. You will not see death. You will go from this life into the next where Jesus says, when you come to this side, I will be waiting. We will have dinner together. We will break bread together. We will drink together face to face. And we will rejoice together because now we are whole. See, Jesus says here that this is available to you and I here today. Let's stand. Folks, friends, listen to me. For those that are worshiping at home with us, connected with us online, I want you to get this in your spirit today because maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I, I, I want to take me in and I, I want to let you know that today is your day. Today's your day for healing. Today's your day to, to move past the bitterness. Today's your day to fully take on all of who Jesus is in your life. And maybe you've never given your life to Jesus Christ before. Maybe you've never wholly committed yourself. Maybe there was a time where you were and you've walked away, but I want to give you an opportunity today. Today can be a day for you to recommit yourself 
and say, okay, God, I, I trust you. I believe in you. I, I put my life in your hands and I receive all that you are today in me. If that's you today, I want to encourage you to pray along with me. And, and we're all going to pray together. Is that all right? So with heads bowed, eyes closed. If that's you today, repeat after me. Jesus, I believe today that you are Savior of the world. I confess I'm in desperate need. I'm in need of saving. I'm in need of healing. I'm in need of restoring. Take all my bitterness. Take all my pain. Take all my mistakes. In exchange, I receive your peace. In exchange, I receive your joy. In exchange, I receive salvation today. I declare I'm free. I declare I'm saved. And I declare today that I am a friend of Jesus. I receive it. I confess it. I believe it. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer, come on. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Now, I believe we're ready to take communion today. So right there beside you, go ahead and grab the cup. Go ahead and grab the bread that's there for you that's at home. Go ahead and get yourself ready right now. And we're going to do this a little bit different. I've asked the worship team just to simply play and to sing. But I want this to be an intimate moment for you to have with Jesus today. Again, this meal is for you. It's meant to be intimate. It's meant to be shared between you and the Lord today. And so now I want you to give thanks to God for all that he has provided to you. All of the freedom, all of the joy, everything that he says that he is in this meal. I want you to rejoice. I want you to thank God. I want you to just go to him today. And you right there, have it on your own. And I want you to respond Respond however the Lord leads you. Maybe that's praying right there where you're at. Maybe that's coming to the altar today and having communion right here at the altar. Maybe that's kneeling there where you're at. Maybe that's having communion and just raising your hands and worshiping Him today. But I want you to respond to Jesus in communion today. Can we do that? Father, we give you thanks today for the bread and for the cup. Thank you for your work today in the name of Jesus.